ardor. Somebody say ardor. Or passion. In 24 and 24, they seem excited about following God. After Joshua spoke to them, they said, we will obey the Lord and we will serve him. Joshua helped to reignite that fire down on the inside of them. We've got to get our passion back in serving God. We've got to get our passion back in worshiping God. What happened to that fire that was down on the inside of you when you first got saved? We used to be excited about our salvation where we would tell everybody we came in contact with about the goodness of God. Passion births miracles. Passion births blessings. Passion births miracles. Passion for our families. Passion for our children. Some of us, we didn't even know that we were going to make it here on today. But I'm, I'm praising God. I'm thanking God with you on today that he is going to give you your passion back. Somebody jump up and shout, I'm getting my passion back. Say, I'm getting my passion back. Oh, come on here. You can put some calm behind it. I'm getting my passion back. Passion for my family is coming back. Anybody need your passion to come back? Your fire to come back? Your happiness to come back? You almost gave up on your family. You almost went to divorce court. But somebody holler, passion, passion, back. Hallelujah. suggests finding God returns the family back to his lordship. Because there's a difference between having good leaders in the home, but not godly leaders. You might be a stern father, but it doesn't make you a godly father. You might be a hard-working mother, but it doesn't make you a godly right. mm -hmm. mother. Amen. Even though you may be right in your rebuke to your child, I think that it's a way you rebuke your child. All right. All right. I don't believe that you should rebuke your child while cursing your child at the same time. I know I may lose some amens in here, but uh, I don't believe that you should tell your child, get your so-and-so up and take your so-and-so here, and you do whatever the so-and-so I tell you, because I'm the so-and-so H-N-I-C. Uh-huh. Because how is that portraying a godly example in the home? And then you can't understand why the school calls you and tells you that I caught little Jimmy cussing out someone else and I just wanted to call and tell you what little Jimmy did and then you come back and say, not my child. I ain't never heard my child cause they got my child twisted. Well, no, you may have never heard your child cuss, but your child sure enough has heard you cuss. And what we must understand is that our children only do what they see. Oh, I ain't got no church here. They only gonna do what they see us do. And I believe that that's why we have an unbalanced church. We have a church who acts one way on Sunday, but then another way Monday through Saturday. And the reason we're raising up more unbalanced churchgoers is because it's what the former generation has seen in their home. Our mother did anything and sang in the choir. Our fathers acted any old type of way and sang in the choir. 
How in the world you gonna get upset with your child that your child drinks and goes to church, but yet you ch your child see you drinking and go to church? I mean, something is wrong with our theology. Something is wrong with our philosophy, and something is wrong with our parenting skills. But we only want our children to do what we say and not what they see. Because if you bring in every man in the house and expect your daughter not to bring every man in the house, you are fooling yourself. Y'all ain't talking to me here. If you behave in any old type of way and you expect your daughter not to behave in any old type of way, you are fooling yourself. The worst thing and the craziest thing that, I, that I've seen on TV, and not even on TV, it was on Facebook, I saw the daughter break out in a fight. And while the daughter was breaking out in a fight, the mama was in the corner taking her earrings off. Like, hold on, girl. Here I come, handling mama coming, mama. And I'm saying to myself, what kind of craziness is this where mama is taking off her earrings, getting ready to jump in a fight along with her daughter when a real mother gets in between the fight and tells the opponent, you go home to your mama and you bring your black self here with me and I'm going to go home and take care of you because I'm not raising, y'all ain't talking to me here, I'm not raising no crazy child that's getting ready to fight in the street and I'm getting ready to condone that foolishness and bury my child early because I couldn't teach my child morals and integrity and show them how to live a just life. So here we are raising up a crazy battle axe generation because our parents don't know how to stand up to our children and not teach them your way. But teach them God's way. Joshua kept saying something in the text that really blessed me. In verses 14, in verse 20, and in verses 23, Joshua keeps on saying, there's a strange spirit. He says, there's a strange spirit that has entered into the household. And my brothers and sisters, it seems as if history is repeating itself. Because here we are, thousands and thousands and thousands of generations ago and Joshua tells them a strange spirit has seeped in the house and as I look at our generations today I can say the same thing a strange devil a wayward demon has seeped in our home where our babies are coming out and don't know whether they want to be male or female there's a strange spirit that is seeped in the home where our fathers are sleeping with their children as if they are their mates. There's a strange spirit that is seeping in the home where we have no order, no structure, and no discipline. There's a strange spirit. And Joshua says the only way to get rid of this strange spirit is to put God at the hill <laughs> of the home. My brothers and sisters, this strange spirit, Joshua says, is a spirit of bondage and hurt and division. And if we don't get it together, our homes and our families are going to continually fall apart. I don't know, can you just look at the generations? If you look at the generations, there were some of you who were born in the 40s and 50s. And most of the people that were born in the 40s and 50s, not all, but most of them were born in families where they had a mama and a dad. As we keep on growing up, uh, by the time we get into the 80s, now we see something changing where most of the children are growing up, or about 50, 50% 50 of the children are growing up in homes with just the mama and the daddy somewhere where they can't find him. In so much that the Temptations wrote a song that said, Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his, was his. You understand. Uh, uh, because they're teaching us that uh, uh, we don't know who our 